Hello YouTube, welcome to my shop. In the previous video, I went through the very basic setup to actually get the VFD installed into the lathe and actually spinning it up. Finishing that video with the chuck actually spinning. Uh, it was an exciting time, you know, that was the first time I actually spun it up. So you got to see that, maybe not live, but at least, you know, when it happened, delayed through video, through the magic of YouTube. So tonight, I'm going to go into a little more detail on how that's actually configured. We'll go through the final wiring, how to wire the buttons into the VFD, and how to program all of that control, and what I went through to actually make that happen. So, let's go ahead and go back to the back of the lathe and dig into that. Alright, so I kind of quickly went through this in the previous video, but I wanted to go a little more detail now that I've actually figured out all of the, the different configurations. So in order to do this programming, uh, there's different sections, which is this P0, there's P1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's really only a few sections that I'm dealing with since I'm really only using this as sort of a dumb single phase to three phase conversion. I'm not using it for speed control or any of that other stuff at least not yet. This is really just the how do I set up one of these cheap VFDs to substitute for three phase power. You can't really do it directly. The original plug that came out of here, I can't really just take that and, and plug it directly into here just because of all the other switching. These guys like to have direct control of the motor, so having the switches actually cut this thing off from the motor causes issues. So you do have to do some wiring some configuration in order to get this to work. So it's not like a, a rotary phase converter that you can actually just have a plug on the rotary phase converter, plug a device into it and it just work as long as it's the voltage is correct. You do actually have to go through wire in the terminals, wire in your buttons and wire the motor directly to the motor output of the VFD. If we look at the, the way things are wiring here, we've got the main power coming in in this cable here across these three lines here. We've got ground and then hot and neutral. 220 degree or 220 volts standard house power coming in. So the way these uh, inverters work, they can take single phase or three phase input. So the power is cut, so that, that's why I have this metal screwdriver. I'm not too worried about it. So you can take either three phase, which then you hook up all three of these, or you can actually hook up single phase to any two and they work. So it's a little bit confusing. The book actually says only three phase input. Um, I was actually about to return this and order another one that specifically said single phase when uh, they responded back telling me just hook it to any two of these and everything works. And it does. So I'm happy about that. Then I've got the motor output over here. The one, the wires going to the motor are the same gauge. As you probably saw in the previous video, I did have to swap two of these to get the motors running in the correct direction. So when I set something to forward, it actually just goes forward and I don't have any extra settings in there. So the way uh, the button panel on the front of the lathe, I'll take you up there now and we can take a look at the, the, the front button panel and see what it looks like. So this is the button panel on the front of the lathe. And it's a fairly basic setup. Not very exciting. Three buttons. Two are... Uh, I can't think what the, the name of them are. But they're push to engage. And then the emergency stop is actually always on and you push to disengage. Uh, forget what that's called now. Anyway, um, you can look up switches if you're really interested in, in the names of that. But yeah, that, that's all there is to it. So this, this part's fairly simple. These wires go through um, some conduit that goes through the middle of the lathe and comes back into that box behind the inverter on the other side. Okay, so from that front button panel, this green wire is hooked up to the forward button. The red wire to the reverse button 
and this brown wire is hooked up to the emergency stop, which is really just any stop. Anytime you want to stop the motor, that's, that's the button to push. And then this blue wire is actually the common rail across all of them. From here you can see the green wire going into S1, the red wire going into S2, the brown wire going into S3, and the blue wire going into common. Starting over here at the beginning, I'm going to go ahead and run through the programming. So everything's already set, so I'm not actually going to be changing any parameters, but I will show you how you would basically go about doing it. it it's uh, a little convoluted at first, but once you kind of get the hang of it, you, it starts to make a little bit more sense, and you, it helps you kind of decipher the way this is. This is, you know, the kind of video I wish I would have had when I first started this, because this was all completely foreign to me. I didn't really know anything about motors or three-phase or anything, and really just reading these manuals, they're obviously, you know, written by somebody in Chinese and probably automatically converted to English. Um, this one's definitely better than the previous one that I got about a year ago, but it's still a little bit hard to follow, and it really seems to assume that you have a lot of knowledge on the way these things work. So. Just having a, a little bit of a primer like this would have been helpful. So that, that's what I want to do for anybody else that wants to, to check this out. The first step, go into programming mode, and I'll be on P0. P0 is the, the, the parameter group that I'm on for basic functions. So I can hit data set here. Now I'm at P00, which is this guy here. If I go up to P01, now I'm on this one here, and I can hit set again, and we can see that this is set to 1, which is what I set it to. If you need to change it, you can use the arrow keys. If, uh, if it's multiple digits, you can use the shift key to get through it. We'll go over that on the, on the next one. So this one should be set to 1. We're good. So here we're going to skip to P03. So I'm going to go up to 3. I'm going to hit set. And this one defaults to 50, but I've set it to 60, as you can see here. So if we go set, now we're, whenever you set a parameter, it'll automatically jump to the next one for you. So this one should also be set to 60, which it is. And then this one I should be able to set, yeah. So setting it to 60, we're good jumps to P5. P5 is the lower frequency limit, which defaults to zero, and I didn't need to change that one. So I left that one alone. So we want to go on to six, and it's set to 60, changed off of its default of 50. So the that's the keypad re reference frequency. Um, again, you know, a lot of these things are trial and error, hoping that I don't blow anything up while I'm doing it. The next one here is to go to 11. So there's 11 data set. And this is the one where, like I said, it was different. I had it three here before. I've set this to a half second so that the motor starts up a lot faster. Um, the three second was okay. Setting it to a half second is much nicer. The deceleration time, 12, I've left at three seconds. The default on these were 20 seconds, which is a really long time. So, uh, and I believe the Bridgeport had a, a similar issue where when you hit run, it would literally go e extremely slow, spin up, taking 20 seconds to come up to full speed. So you, this is uh, one thing, if, that's, if you're noticing that behavior, this is what you need to look for to actually fix that. Now back to the motor parameters page where we'll set the... Uh, picture back down here. For this one, we're going to be skipping from P0 up to P2. P1 was for a different set of parameters, so this is actually the motor parameters. So we're going to escape out of that and change this to P2. Descend into it. We're on P20, which is has to do with the model. This is the G model, so it's set to zero, and it's set by default. So if we go to one, 
we'll see that it's 5.5, which is the kilowatts translated from the horsepower on the nameplate of the motor. P02 set to 60 off of the nameplate. P03 1740 again off the nameplate. 4 200 that's the 200 volts off the nameplate. 5 23 amps 23 amps based off the nameplate. And then the rest of these are Things you can get in an auto tune, and it will help if you're doing uh, if you're using the VFD as a speed control. For the next part, I'm going back, and I'm going to be going to parameter group five, which is the input terminals. That's where the wires that are wired into the S1, 2, and 3, and the common down here. So P50 has to do with the way the input comes. I'm not worried about that. We'll go to one and it is actually set to the number one, which is forward. Two is set to the number two, which is reverse. Three is set to the number three, which is the three wire control. So the way these parameters work, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, can all be set to any number between 0 and I think 31, 32, 30, up to 32, 33 through 39 are reserved. And each of those numbers assign a different thing to that specific terminal. So I only use the first three terminals and I set those to forward, reverse, and three wire. If you have more buttons and you need to wire up maybe some jog buttons so you can kind of go a little bit faster or slower or whatever. Um, if you have a braking resistor in your VFD, you might be able to, you might want to set up a coast to stop versus a, a braking stop. Um, if you want to set up some speed control, there's options for doing that in some of these as well. You can change acceleration, deceleration time, all of, the, all of those parameters you can set to a button that's attached to one of those terminals. And the final setting, after setting number three, is P510, which I have set to three, which if you want to, if you just got to this part of the video and you're wondering why we set it to three, you'll have to jump back previous in the video where I kind of went over a little bit of the, with the different schematics and stuff. And that's the basic setup of how to program this VFD to be just a dumb three phase, single phase to three phase conversion with uh, the button panel actually functional. And that's what I had to go through in order to get this to work. You know, like I said earlier, um, I really wish I had something like this as a reference that I could have went through when I was first setting up my bridge port. Um, again, there, there was very little information and the books are really difficult to follow. Um, from what I've heard, even if you know a decent amount about it, the books are still hard to follow. So if you don't know anything about it, they're that much harder. At the end of the day, it's not that complicated to go through it all. You know, if you know what it, if you know what the basics are, it's not that difficult to go through it. So I wanted to kind of give everybody an option so that they can see how that actually functions. It, going through the different parameter groups, finding uh, each of the keys, kind of going through the book and, and gleaming the information that you need and highlighting, really most importantly, highlighting those items that need to be configured at least to get the very basics up and running. Now, whether or not I'm gonna go with more details on that, I could put a potentiometer on here, never use the hydraulic, um, speed control, 
which is apparently not necessarily prone to failure, but when they do fail, they're expensive to replace, expensive to fix, and whatnot. If that ever happens, I'll probably replace that with a potentiometer for adjusting the speed. Um, at that time, maybe I'll know a little bit more about how to do it, and I'll post another video with more details. As it is right now, I don't know how to do that. Um, you know, I, I could dig it out. I don't need to. As it is right now, I'm just going to kind of let the sleeping dogs lie and be happy that the lathe works. Thank you. Here, I'd like to take a second and just ask, you know, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see other machining videos, you can look through my history. You can subscribe to me up here. You can uh, check out some of these other videos, wherever they are, up there, and this guy down here. And please, like, leave comments down below.